Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new, um, welcome. If you love plants, you're gonna love my channel. And if you've been watching my uh, videos, I really, really appreciate your support and I really appreciate your comments. It means a lot to me that we're sharing together in this plant journey. So today's video, as you saw by the title, is gonna be a plant tour of my house plants slash plant chores. And I'll share with you any tips and cares that I recommend as I encounter them. I'm gonna give you a real like behind the scenes of how I take care of my plants. I have over 200 plants, so I'm only gonna take care of my plant room plants. That's what I call the plants that are in this room. So just so you'll know a little bit more about this room, this is uh, my plant room slash my guest room. And uh, I do have a high amount of plants in this one room because it's an extra bedroom. Um, and overall, because I really like this room because it has two windows. And I've been able to put these IKEA shelves here in this room so I can do a, put a lot of plants and take advantage of this beautiful lighting that comes in through uh, outside windows. We have this window here. This one's facing east, so in the morning, we do get direct sunlight coming in through this side. And this window here is facing um, south. Um, so we get more of the afternoon light coming in. I wanted to say it was a little bit of southwest-ish. I don't know. I just know that in the in the winter, I get more light from this winter. You know how like, the sun changes through the year. So long story short, we get a lot of sunlight through these two windows through the whole year, basically. Now, I do have some grow lights, as you can see here. I do have them here and these were basically extra lights that I had so I went ahead and I put them there and this one also uh, was given to me and I do have a video when I installed it and I can put a little link of that video if you guys want to see it and basically I'm happy that I have these extra lighting here because when it is a gray day I try to remember to pop them on. Um, so I'll give you more details if you're interested in seeing a lot of these plants and me giving you close-ups and us doing some plant chores together, then you're going to want to watch this video. Okay, so I just want to give you a quick little tour just so you can have an idea. These are just some plant shelves that we installed um, a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago. So I have a lot of lights there. And as you can see, they are getting right now some sunshine hitting them, which is really nice. I feel like the winter's even better for this room than even, maybe even the summer. And just so you guys can know also, this is driftwood and I was able to hang these jungle cactuses and uh, deschidia, burl's tail. Usually I have this in my outside back porch patio, but because it is winter, I've put a lot of plants that usually go outside into this plant room. So this room, plant room is a little more crowded than usual. It's not, I feel it's a little too much, but I have to do it in winter. Um, at least right now. I still don't have a greenhouse that I have up and running. I put it out there, but I didn't really have any heaters to put in there yet. So at this point, I was in a rush to bring all these plants in. And I brought a lot of them from the outside. Um, let's see, what else was I going to say? Yeah, so again, this is also a little extra little shelf that I actually have moved around the house in different areas. But at this point, I decided to just put it here. I can just move it easily out of the way so I can access these shelves. Um, and again, I'm putting extra plants here because you're getting a lot of light. So basically, I just want to show you guys what I do when I have some extra time, how I take care of my plants, um, how I manage how I go about making decisions that I have to make. Like, when do I water my plants? Um, maybe checking for uh, insects or, you know, troubleshooting plants. That's basically what I had to do with a plant mama, <laughs> being a plant parent, is troubleshooting you counter a lot of things. Again, these are just a little shelf that I have here. And um, I have here on this rack a lot of the products that I'll use to treat pests on my plants and um, water bottles with water um, fertilizers i have a lot of fertilizers in here and i have some doggy stuff too as well um, not the best scenario i have a lot of extra little stuff but i do have plans to do more in this room but at this point this is where it's at um, as you can tell since there's a bed here when people have slept here they're basically signing up to sleep in a 
jungle. <laughs> I tell them when they stay here, this is an experience for you. If you love plants, you'll be fine. If you don't, don't stay here. But, um, <laughs> but anyhow, sometimes my husband and I have talked about what if we just put like a little, um, I wish sometimes the bed wasn't here. I could basically put a little table to like a workstation to work for my, on my plants to like repot and maybe film videos. I wish I had this little space sometimes, but then again, when I do have guests, having two extra bedrooms with beds set up is a great plus. So anyhow, this is where we're at. Okay, so I have a little bit of time. I'm gonna, I've been wanting to see what plants need water. So I have my broom and my vacuum here ready to clean some messes that I know have happened. When you're a plant mama, thinks the reality is you're gonna have dead leaves falling, you're gonna have dirt that's spilled, you're gonna have water that's spilled. Um, so yeah, it, cleaning is something that must be done from time to time and um, it's hard to keep it perfect um, unless you're, I guess, everyday cleaning. Um, <laughs> I do have a personal a work job that I do. Um, I work two days a week at a dentist's office and I also volunteer um, to help my community and I do that a few times a week every week. So I do have a busy schedule. But this is basically my hobby and my extra time is taking care of my plant babies. Um, so let's start taking care of them. We'll start here. Let's check them out. Okay, so first thing that I'm gonna do is walking into this room is I'm gonna get my moisture reader. That's what I call it. <laughs> because this also measures lighting, but I really don't use that. All I do is to me measure if a plant needs water. Um, like you'll see, I'll use it for some plants, not for every plant. Some plants are kind of obvious that they need water. And some plants I have doubts. So I like to have this in my hand so I can know for sure. Now I have um, different watering cans to water my plants. I have this bigger one and I have a smaller one. I feel like they're both very needed. Sometimes a small one helps me to get into these little small spaces and water my plants. The big ones carry just a lot more water and they're better for bigger plants. Um, to just get more done because this I have to refill quite a bit. Now, immediately when I'm gonna water my plants, I am fertilizing it every time I water my plants, almost every single time. That's what I'm doing. Now, I have different fertilizers that I use. So I have my fish fertilizer. I have my liquid dirt. And I have, I just recently bought this one, guys. Jack's house plant special and haven't even tried this yet but I'm thinking and I have the seaweed extract so I have a variety you know and but just so you'll know I started with this one this one's great I have no complaints about it it's just stinky I actually I do have a complaint it's stinky so then I've gotten liquid dirt now if you guys know a little bit about liquid dirt you're supposed to dilute it a lot I think it's half a cap full for a gallon of water something like that or a cat full for a gallon of water when i just got it i did that a little bit and then from that gallon of water you dilute it even more but that was work for me <laughs> so i have another little trick that i'm doing basically i shake it up it came with this little thingy so i i extract some of it and it's dark like this and i basically keep it here so when i'm gonna water my plants if i have i'll put just one drop it's really dark in color. I mix it up. And this has not burned my plants at all. It is more, it's organic fertilizer. So basically it's like um, compost of a lot of different animals, bats and lots of different animals. So it's organic fertilizer, um, but I don't want to waste it either. So I don't need to, you don't need to do much. So just this color here is basically what I know lo it looked like when I had diluted it a lot according to the instructions so to me it seems very similar and so much easier just doing a little drop i even do just one one drop on this and obviously this would be a lot more concentrated than that but i kind of honestly just winged it watered some plants make sure and watch them to see if it was going to burn or create any damage but it didn't i didn't think so because it is organic fertilizer but i feel like organic fertilizer can also burn plants if you overdo it but so far, no issues. So basically, that this is my quick way of putting some kind of nutrients 
stuff that maybe after time is lacking in the soils of a lot of my plants or my sphagnum moss doesn't have any soil any nutrients i'm giving it something so that's what i'm doing so now okay this is a very heavy one i'm not going to use this one right now i'm going to go and do my shelf and i need something that doesn't weigh much so i'm going to put my little drop here i'm going to get water and it will start in that shelf over there okay so i did want to tell you that water it's important that it's never too cold or too hot uh, more room temperature water is ideal. So basically when I run the faucet, especially in winter, I let a lot of water come drain out until I can feel that the warmth is coming and I make sure it's at that room temperature temperature and then fill it up because you do not want to shock a plant with very cold water, especially now in winter. So it's something to keep in mind. Okay, so basically the truth is I just climb on my bed and that's how I can sh check on this shelf. So first, just at a glance, I feel like this plant needs water. It's a little droopy, but I'm gonna double check. So another check way of checking is I'm gonna pick it up and see if it, what the weight is. This one doesn't weigh much. I'm not even gonna waste time with this. I know it needs water. It's in one of my soaked watering pots from Ikea, where it even keeps a little extra water reserve. Um, again, I'll link a video that I did on how to use these Ikea soap watering um, planters because there is a little trick to it in order for it to be the most effective. Um, and I'll share what I've been doing. So we're gonna go ahead and, and I'm basically just watering from the top. I feel I can drench a little bit the soil and any excess soil is gonna be caught down there. I don't have to worry about any spillage unless I overdo it big time, which I'm not. I kind of have an idea how much. Now, part of my plant care is looking at the leaves and this one has some dry leaves here. Uh, from the past so basically I don't sweat it sometimes it happens uh, overall the plant looks good very good it is a good time to go ahead and and check and make sure that you don't see any pests wow I don't know when this happened actually <laughs> that is more than what I would have thought it would be good to have a little baggie to throw away all these little leaves I should go get something but yeah it would be it's good to take away these dead leaves because it can attract pests so any you know any suffering plant the leaves release something that kind of pests are attracted to and they know that when a leaf is suffering it's more vulnerable for attacks so it's better to just kind of clean it out it looks better these are easy to remove i still feel i can put more water it's not weighing much so i'll let you guys see so this is my neon, did I say it? My neon green pothos, beautiful plant, highly recommend it. I got this one from Costa Farms at Lowe's. Oops, did I drip some water? Okay, so. Clean this spot and then I'll take these leaves. Okay, so this plant should perk up by tomorrow. Let me go get something to put these leaves in. So I'll just put the trash can here. Okay, clean that up. Okay, now here is my Moonlight Trivia, which this one needs water. I can feel the soil right now, but look, look, beautiful roots. Okay, so, but you know what? I'm a little bit in doubt. So we're gonna check it. See, it's measuring two. So I'm just like inserted in different areas. One. Earlier, guys, I said when I put dirt on the top, I put water on the top, not dirt. And these are from Target, the pots. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to do too many things at once. This one needs water, okay? Now, I'm going to put just, you know, I'm kind of now from my experience, I have an idea how much water to put. You don't want to put too much and you don't want to put too little. I'm going to put here what I think is a good amount. I and now I should come back to it after I'm done watering my, all my plants and pull this out, the plastic pot, and just throw away any water that's still sitting in the bottom of the pot, if there's any water sitting in the bottom of the pot. Right now there's a little extra water, but I know this it's going to su uh, suction it up. And if it doesn't, if it's still there after 30 minutes, an hour, you should go and dump it. Because if not, it can cause root rot. Um, I think there's such a little bit extra there that that's going to be actually suctioned up. So, that's 
kind of how I do it there. Now this is, ooh, I said going, I hadn't been up here on the show for a bit, so I knew I needed water. Um, this is a uh, Syngonia, and there is a little bit of pink spots in some of these leaves. That one, well maybe that one's just browning. Oh, no, that's browning actually. This one's more of a, just a regular whitish light green color. <gasps> it's super thirsty. It's measuring, mm -hmm. see I'm doing it in different areas. Some areas have a four, four and a half, but it doesn't weigh much. I know I'm not going to be over here to water these plants in a bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit, not too much. And that should maybe help out a little bit that it was lacking. We see some, some brown leaves. These are easy to just cut off. I'm, gonna, I'm doing it with my nail. Just cutting it off. From time to time, it's great to take these in the shower and just rinse them with water. Um, I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to stop the video and go over there and do it. But from time to time, I select plants, take them to the shower, and I'll, I'll rinse them with water um, that I have actually in my, in my bathroom shower that I can get like a hose and just spray them down. And it's good because it sprays any, any little pest that maybe wants to get started or it can just spray any of the, the dust. Okay, trash. Manjula Paco, this is a beauty, isn't she? Okay, let's see if you need water. Oh uh, yeah, doesn't weigh much. Well, let's see if I'm right. Doesn't weigh much. Let's check it out. Let's see what this little measurement thing says. <laughs> it says, I don't have any water, it's dry. You see how this little thing, I mean, it's a little a security thing to kind of just double check and see. Uh-oh. I love white blankets, but I'm not, this is not the smartest thing. Okay, let's go get water. I ran out of water. So, I feel like I get a workout when I'm taking care of my plants, going back and forth. I'm just gonna do this one here. Maybe it'll make less of a mess. Then on top of my white blanket, again. This one I won't have to come back to because it has the target so watering pots. And it catches a little extra water and brings it up to the soil as needed. So this one's good. I'm gonna leave it here. Actually, I can go ahead and, no, I'm gonna leave it here. I don't wanna spill any water. Okay, so let's keep going. Let me see. Can I take this big one? Monkey tail cactus needs some water. It needs more water than what I usually imagine. And this is my orchid cactus. These are uh, my Syngonium alder propagations. They're doing good. It's kind of good until now. This little white has a little bit of browning there, but um, it's rooting up really nicely. I'm very happy about that but sometimes that just happens with variegation. And then I have here my horsehead philodendron. Let's see how you're doing. So pretty. Um, I'm gonna have to measure it. And my water's far away, I'll come back to it. So then I'll check this curly orchid cactus. My big rack cactus has been doing great. And this is my burrow's tail, and it's been doing phenomenal. And even though I brought them from the outside to the inside, I'm surprised how well, how well they're doing. This is by Deshidia Jerry. So I'm gonna go ahead and water all these, and then we'll move on to the IKEA shelves. I already watered these two. Now I'm here at my burrow's tail. And I'm basically doing light watering since winter. I don't feel like they need a lot of water. They've been doing great with light waterings. And I do have these little plastic here, catch pot. And that's how I manage to water them here and not have to move them. It's all the extra water droplet. This one has it too. Okay, so something. Okay, just put that there. 
to <laughs> catch any of the extra. I feel like the water just flew, flowed from the top and it rolled over and it fell. Sometimes when they're so dry, <laughs> the water just kind of rolls out. So anyways, part of, part of the real world and how watering plants goes. So let's continue here with this begonia, the maculata. It's just, you know, it's doing okay. You know, these plants require a lot of well, constant watering. Let me see if it needs water. Yeah, it's really, it's really not heavy, so I know it needs water. This one, I, I kind of want to do one of the soap watering pots I just bought yesterday more at Target. So I would like to a, put it in one of those because that's why it's lost a lot of leaves. Again, I can always come back and check on it, make sure it's drank all that water, and if it hasn't, just throwing it away. But um, it's still, it's kicking, it's still working, it's still living, and it's very tall, but it's lost a lot of the leaves down here. Okay, guys, so I think I'm gonna just water some plants. I won't maybe talk about every single one because I don't want this video to be so long. This linearis is still heavy, doesn't need water. This one needs water. This one should have filtered water, so I might skip this one. <gasps> This one's terrible condition. It's super dry. And that's a uh, red, uh, red, orange philodendron? Or red philodendron? Something like that. What is it called? What? Okay, so this is the McCollum's Finale philodendron, and it was looking really pretty. And look at this. Yeah, I want to make sure there's no pests. So. Let's see the back of the leaves. Hmm, let's pull it out. Something seems suspicious to me. Uh, so when a leaf, when a plant looks sad, all of a sudden it could be lack of water, yes. And sometimes it can be some kind of pest. And right now, I thought I saw something here. Let's see here, this is my hands. Let's, I kind of look at it closely, see if anything is moving. And when there's doubts, it's always good. Actually, I'm gonna take this one. Mm. I don't know, I have, you see a little, little dot there? So I'm gonna go spray it down with water. I don't think there's a big infestation. It was really dry too, but I'm gonna spray it down with water in my bathroom sink. So I'll take it over there and treat plants that's needed over there. Okay, so this is my fishtail Oh yeah, I cut a lot of it off and I'm propagating it. And um, it's here in sphagnum perlite. It's been kind of slow since I propagated. I don't see much growth happening, but she's still there. And this zebra, I think I put a little bit of water yesterday, so it's good. But it's one of the, if it dries out, losing a lot of leaves, I wouldn't buy that one again. And <laughs> my watermelon peperomia, I'm not a fan either, but... She's here while she's here, and I'm trying to keep up with it. But Peperomias, at this point, I'm not looking forward to buying any of them anymore because they're pretty for some time, and then they're not pretty anymore. And you know what? There's other plants that are easier for me, and they're doing good, so I don't have to have every species, you know? That's kind of my philosophy. Look at this beautiful little um, variegated pearl. <laughs> pearl, um, sedum. String of pearls, there you go. That's what I wanted to say, look. I'm gonna check if it's if it doesn't weigh anything at all. So actually what I do is just put a little bit like that. I've been doing little squirts like that and it's been doing good. This one here, oh, pretty. I just gave it water yesterday, so I'm not even gonna sp spray anything on it. Type of succulent, I forgot its name. I think I just saw this at Aldi's for sale too. Okay, this is my variegated no not my very just my string of pearls i'm like picking it up and i'm analyzing how much it weighs it doesn't weigh anything so all the i'm just gonna put a light little squirt there squirt pour so far so good guys there's other ways of doing this i'm sharing how i'm doing it and for the most part my plants do good so for the most part this one i can tell it weighs something this is my holy nereus and it's absolutely beautiful and it keeps growing and growing. I've propagated this one. I've sold a lot of cuttings and it's doing so, so good. Okay, I don't want to jump this um, 
Oh, this one weighs. It doesn't need any water. Hoya, this is a Hoya princess. Very pretty. And then, but she constantly gets mealy bugs. I try for her not to touch other plants. Constantly cleaning her at down. But, um, you know, it is what it is. I've learned not to fear too much mealy bugs. Now, this is my squamiferum that I found from... Oh, it needs water. I'm grabbing it. It doesn't weigh anything. Got this one from Lowe's. Some of you guys found some. I was thrilled. Real thrilled. So I'm going to go ahead and water this baby. It's dry. You can see how dry it is. And there's new leaves that are unfurling. So I don't want to be behind in giving it water. But the leaves don't crisp up quickly like begonias do with this one. I feel like it dries kind of quickly because up here it does get a good amount of light. I haven't even taken the tags off. Okay. Variegated lipstick plant. Let me see. Uh, it weighs pretty good. Not too much. I think it can do good for three, four more days. See, it's losing leaves. This one did so much better outside than it is inside, but we're doing the best we can. Okay. So these in the top shelves are the ones that I usually don't take care of or don't water as often, so I don't want to miss them today. This is a string of buttons, I believe, and I love it. And it can get pink. Um, and I just saw this in Aldi's, which is pretty cool and a very pretty planter. This one's dry, dry, dry. I know I haven't watered it in a good two weeks easily, right? Or three weeks. So, just a little squirt there. Copy her back up. And look at what we have here. Beautiful plant. This is a string of turtles. Let's see, I haven't checked on you in a bit. My friend, look, a little extra leaves. And um, you see this growth? When they're standing up, that means they're happy. So I'm happy to see it happy. I still have it in the pot that it came from Co in Costa Farms. Farm, you know, it's one of the Costa Farms planters. Got it like at Lowe's. I think I've had this one for about a year and a half. This is one of my older ones. Um, I brought her over here because she was getting bleached where I had her before in my living room. She was getting too much sun. So string of turtles don't want too much sun, direct sun. Now they'll get bleached out. And I feel like the new growth is a pretty color. And you can see the black markings really good. So this is something I wanted to share with you guys in case you have a string of turtles. And you're experiencing the, where you're not seeing the black markings anymore, darker markings, is because it's getting too much sun most likely. So this one is dry. Like right now I picked it up. It doesn't weigh much. You can tell the soil is dry. So basically I'm doing a, a little light pour and let's get the catch pot. We're getting... Oh, there you go. Okay. Sorry, making a mess. Okay. Bring you back up. You're happy there. Ooh, this one's again. The peperomia too, right? I forgot. It's a Chinese money plant, but it's a peperomia. I think so. I'm right now drawing a blank, but um, I've had this one for a long time. Had a lot of babies, giving them away, but I think when I see a really pretty one, I think it's really, really pretty. But she's grown kind of crazy, but she, she's dry. She needs water. So we're gonna go ahead and water yeah it's been a bit since I had water this one again trying to get the extra leaves out which is the healthiest thing how to do okay popping you back in taking away this yellow leaf instead of leaf okay um this is another squamiferum and I have them in different locations in my house because I want to see like what lighting they like best. This one's dry, dry. Beautiful plant. I'm really loving those stems. With the fussy petioles. Okay. Again, I repeat, of course, you have to throw away any extra water. They might stay here after 30 minutes, an hour. But at this point, I wanted to sit on that, that extra water. I love this section. I have a lot of my plants that like a lot of light because 
I get more harsh light here from the afternoons. My variegated handy ropes have been doing great. Look, this is so dry. You see how it's curly? <gasps> I'm so glad I'm doing this right now. But she's beautiful and she's been growing. Light is great for variegated handy ropes. My finger from the fertilizer. Okay, so yes. I'll go again and give you some water. I have a little catch thingy down there. These uh, Hindu ropes need a little more water than you would think than a regular Hoya. I feel like the leaves are a little thinner. This is another one, but this one, yeah, they both have the variegation on the outside. Needs water. By the way, I did this. I bought this from Hobby Lobby and I edited it and I think it looks so cute. Now over here is a plant I've been wanting to show you. A variegated string of hearts. I've done videos on this plant, how I bought it teeny tiny. And it's been growing really, really, really nicely. There is wrinkling right now in the hearts. I can tell immediately it needs water. So I'm going to stick it back over here. And just water around pot. I feel like this one needs, this is my string of spades. It needs water too because this one, I think I lost it. It's a silver glory. Oh, there's like a little, two little hearts in here. Basically almost dead. This one was a small little cutting that I bought. Another string of pearls. Yes, it doesn't weigh anything. I'm gonna go ahead. And then I have here some little different types of cactuses all here together. On the cactuses, I'm really not watering them, but every like good solid month in between. Okay, over here is a Pachiclada, a Hoya. And I, I put her here, I want her to get more lighting because I know I can get some kind of distressing color, like a reddish color, and it looks really, really pretty. Where's the best? Let me see if it weighs much. It's getting tight. See, I have so many plants now. I feel like it doesn't need water, so let's move on. Down here, I am also watering them like only like, you know, every, every month, per, approximately three weeks. And I'm doing light waterings. So I'll just do a little squirt. Um, I did some yesterday, so I don't wanna, this one doesn't want anything. So I'm just gonna do a little, I know you're supposed to let cactuses kind of be dormant during the winter. So I just do from little, little squirts maybe once a month. And so far so good, everything's pretty steady here. Um, this is a Pachiclada and that's how I pronounce it. I don't know if it's the correct way, it's Hoya. Waiting for it to be stressed. Give me flowers. This one does need water. Oh yes, I, I do water them every like two weeks or when they reach dry, no matter if it's winter. Um, a little lithops. Cutie patootie. No, definitely not watering him. And yeah, good thing these plants don't require a lot of watering, so it's less work. So let's go over here. I have my, a lot of my truby eyes. We kind of went crazy in about a million. But four, this one's dry. Definitely, I could just pick it up. Not even gonna bother with a moisture beater. I know it needs water. Have a little catch pot here. And even caps a space, so I don't even have to take away the extra water, not for that pot. Because it kind of has a little space with air in the middle. Okay. Some of you guys wanted to know how my Moonlight Trubias were doing. Well, this is, some of them got burnt. I put too much light here. It was over there and they got burnt. So I've got to be careful with that. <laughs> That's burning from light. And, uh, but there has been some growth. They're not dying. They're not fast growers, at least not in my case. Maybe I need to change the fertilizer and I need to try that Jack's one and see that that will help. This is one of my original Moonlight Truby Eyes that we bought. We paid way a lot of money for it, but it's still alive. Okay, beautiful little leaves. These are small, but they're pretty. Okay, so right here I have these babies probably need water. This is my uh, Skindapsis splash. Look at that splashing. Look at that baby. She's been so good. She's getting, oh, look at the leaves here. Look at that leaf. This is Skindapsis splash. Isn't that the coolest? Love it. Yellow leaf, pop it. What are nails for, right? Yes, you need water. And then right here. 
right over here. Yellow leaf. It would be a good time to go ahead and turn some leaf plants. You see, because they were facing the light over there, and it's good to turn over to your plants from time to time. And then you get to see the beautiful face. Look how pretty you are. <laughs> this one's dry. Again, they're getting so much light here that they get dry quicker. And these definitely, when they reach dry, you want to water them. They're not like the cactus and the succulent that they can endure without water. That's just a little philodendron um, heart leaf, that green form, and it's not doing great. I had it in another area where it didn't get much light. Light, and look at that. Which I've been ready to kind of toss it, but how can you toss a plant? <laughs> but look at that. Oh my. It, it doesn't need water now. It seems like we recently watered it. But it's not overwatered either. So, anyways, I think it's going to come back at some point. Okay, let's move on. Got those, got those. This is a succulent. I did a little squirt the other day. These are not. These are kind of elongated, but I can always cut and propagate later on. Not a problem. Down here. Okay, what do we have down here? Another moonlight. You need water. And then here we have a red emerald that I'm propagating from my mother plant. And I've kind of not done too much to it. I think I need to do better with maybe fertilizing it. I didn't even get good water in because I ran out of water. I have also red emerald propagations here. I probably have to refill this with water. I have my orchids back here. Look at that. My orchids came down the bottom shelf because they don't require a lot of light in the winter. So basically that's why they're in the bottom shelf. And I am watering them like once every month and a half. But the leaves don't even look dehydrated. So these are troopers in the winter, even a new leaf coming out. <laughs> I haven't done much to them. At this point, I'm not going to do it because I don't have time. This is my pickle cactus. Things went wrong. I think there was root rot. I had it in a place where it didn't have a lot of light. So basically, I'm just waiting for it to re-root. And I should stick it in the soil so they can re-root. First, I let them kind of callus over. That's what I was doing. And I meant to pop them back in here after a few weeks. And it has been a few weeks soil so so dry that it's hard for them to stick up okay well I don't want to <laughs> I come back in baby okay I think I might need to water it just a little bit so those I'm out of water story of my life these are my milk um syngoniums and they are dry they need water these are propagations that I'll have them for sale my Etsy shop in spring. I kind of stopped selling plants because I didn't want to ship anything right now that is cold. I don't want nothing to die. I know you can do heat packs, but heat packs have not been very successful when I've bought plants from other people. So I don't want to do that now. And then this is my Calistofolia Hoya. But yeah, these middle confettis are gorgeous. They're going to be gorgeous for this spring coming up. We don't have a lot of time. I don't want to make this video so long, so I'm just going ahead and moving along. And then right over here, I have some of the silver splashes syngoniums. So sometimes I just put water in this pan. They're propagating in perlite, and then they can just get the water they need. Those don't need water. These do. Picking up some extra leaves. These also, again, are for my spring cell plants. And this is a Decidious Discolor. Dis I forgot. Discolor. Decidious Discolor, I think. And um, I just kind of brought them from the outside and they were going to die, so I'm propagating for my own sake. Okay, let's go up here to this shelf. This is my Staniella elbow is doing phenomenal. Look at that beautiful variegation. Look at that beautiful plant. This is packed, packed. And more leaves are opening up. Good till I needed some water. Okay. This is an Ethereum. It's not that great a compact. I'm not so in love with it, but 
I think we kind of got it in a deal where we got three plants. We couldn't choose that one and just came with it. This one, I totally forgot the name. It's an anthurium. It's not a common one. <gasps> this global green, global green propagation is not doing that great. It's needed water big time. Some Hoya Nearis back here. Those I checked on them recently, they're fine. And this is a Hoya Australis, Lisa, and I think it's fine. Okay, there's a little Syngonium that's struggling at back here. Okay, Peperomia back there. I can't reach it. I'll do that later. I think that is a little quick, quick, but it wasn't that quick, guys. Sorry, overview um, of my plants. Some Choco Red Philodendrums that I have them in this little baggie. Lost all their leaves. We recently put water in there, right? So I'm just going to put just a little bit of water, hoping that this little bag, Ziploc baggies, will give it more community, but they basically need to be my IKEA cabinet so they can get more leaves because they need more humidity. Uh, look at my Vaticii. You guys wanted to see how it's doing. Got it from Equigenera. Little leaf coming here. This one has not been as hard um, as my Choco Red. It's a tab of very cold. Awesome. Oh, you guys wanted to see, this is one of those um, um, Monsteras. They had some variegation that basically I bought accidentally and it has some variegation. And I wanted to give you guys an update. Look, there's just that leaf that has some variegation. There's this one. And there's a new one that's coming so it's not high variegation but there is some variegation so i'm excited about that and then this beautiful civil blue pothos it's trailing up um on the wall and this one needs a little bit of love we're gonna give it some water here's another vaticii and therium how beautiful is that and I recently gave it water, so it's fine. And this is a silver sword, one of the thinner leaves. This one's okay. I think I need some water. But I'll do that in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, and this is basically... I'm not even going to deal with this right now or in the video. I just don't want to make it so long. But I'll let you see this beautiful one. It's an... <laughs> it's an... Um, Anthurium, Anthurium forgetii. Isn't that beautiful? This one's one of the newest leaves. These all got water like yesterday, so we're cool here. There's some dragon scales, um, some teardrop pepper, teardrop peperomia, raindrop peperomia, and uh, dragon scales are some were are a little bit suffering because they were like they were outside transitioning inside wasn't good where I had put them on, but they're gonna make it. I think spring gonna get nicer. And then this is my Eskimo uh, Croyana that I just bought recently. Maybe you saw in my recent video. I've had it over here separated from the rest of my plants, but I think it's ready to be put over here on this show. Anyways, I had so much fun doing this video. Um, I have so much fun every time I spend time with my plants. It's relaxing time. Um, and I hope you guys can enjoy doing some plant chores yourself. And hopefully you just enjoyed seeing all this beautiful green beauty and seeing more plants. I love seeing you guys' plants. Um, thank you for following me in my channel. Don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram. Also, well, it's called Plant Heartbeats, and you'll see a lot more in my story and updates. Um, thank you for sharing. Don't forget to subscribe and give the thumbs up if you enjoy this type of content. Um, have a great day. Enjoy your plantitas. Bye.